thank you so much for introducing me and having me. And whoa, that's a hard act to follow. <laughs> Gosh, and I love to dance. I'll dance with you anytime. So um, that's it. Movement building, and kind of from my perspective, because, well, Move On was rather surprising experience I had uh, that started in 98, midway in the impeachment scandal. And how many of you know what Move On is, Move On member? OK, high familiarity. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, anyone here familiar with Living Room Conversations? All right, we got a couple, yeah. By the end of this talk, you will be familiar with all of them. I'm going to be cruising through this so fast, and I apologize for missing a bunch of stuff. But they told me I only have 15 minutes to talk to you. So I'll try not to talk too fast. But I will start with the impeachment scandal, which is how I got involved in politics, quite by accident in a lot of ways, because we were six months into an impeachment scandal where it was all anyone was talking about. And my husband and I sent out a one sentence of petition to under 100 of our friends and family that said, Congress must immediately censure the president and get on to pressing issues facing the nation. I could send this to my conservative cousins in the Midwest. It was a very unifying statement. We had Democrats, Republicans, Green Party, Libertarians, and this was, you know, get on with it already. And um, the first, within a week, we had 100,000 people sign that petition, which was absolutely unheard of in 98. And this is the first four days. So this is going viral, my first experience of going viral. Um, and we help people go and vote in 98. And the pundits said that the impeachment was unpopular, and the House voted to impeach. Two weeks later, and we're going, oh, wait a minute. We just got 100,000, hundreds of thousands of people to participate politically for the first time in their lives. We felt like we needed to continue for at least until the next election. We started the We Will Remember campaign. And so we participated and tried to help people um, elect leaders that better represented their values. And we did something else that was kind of new and unheard of. We raised over $2.3 million in small contributions. $35 was an average for the contributions. Now, this was a proof point that you know, politicians could conceivably run for office and not be dependent on the wealthy people and special interests and things like that. That was actually an extraordinary thing at that time. And you know, Move On actually raised $80 million for Obama in 2008. You know, it, things change. So there's some very remarkable, remarkable points of change that I've been able to be part of. So there was, we've had three viral moments at Move On. The first one was the impeachment scandal. The next one was the run-up in the war to Iraq. And this was just uh, the Win Without War Coalition, all these different organizations around the world. We did around the world vigil, which was organized in under a week. It was just amazing. And when it, you know, that was over, in the New York Times, there was this article that said, the fracturing of the Western Alliance over Iraq and the huge anti-war demonstrations around the world this weekend are reminders that there may still be two superpowers on the planet, the United States and world opinion. Now, that was powerful. And you know, I believe in the power of grassroots advocacy, and it still breaks my heart that we failed to stop that war. That was the biggest anti-war protest movement in the history of this world. But we have to get better at it. That's all I have to say. I was getting the feeling that it was bad things that were viral moments. I am happy to report that the run-up to the election for Obama was our other viral moment, which I think was just the poster says it. It was hope. It was inspiring. And now the thing that's causing Move On to grow the most of all is pretty wonderful also. It's sign on is this ability for Move On members. And we have over 7 million of them now. Anyone can do a petition. You know, it can be a local petition. It can be a national petition. And if it's a petition that our members respond to, we can share it with the whole base. 
That's the way we've been growing in the last year. It's pretty amazing and wonderful. So move on. What have we done? <laughs> Strong vision, big ears is the mantra. Notice the ears are even bigger than the vision part. <laughs> really listening to members. And sign on is that. That's listening to members. That's our goal. And that's why I think is the core of good movement building. And I've heard that echoed here. Uh, move on had three viral moments I told you about. The ability to raise big dollars from average citizens. Sign on. And just think of it, there are thousands of organizations that are now helping people participate more actively in the political dialogue and local civic space. It's really wonderful. So for my trajectory, I actually saw this information kind of went, what? I grew up at a time when I saw Women were secretaries, teachers, and nurses, by and large, and not much more. And then the women's movement happened. It was wonderful. It was freeing. Women could do anything, right? Well, I get to this data point about you know, six, seven years ago, and I go, oh, that's the problem. Because it turned out, yes. But if you have children, you're going to probably make about 27% less than an equally qualified man. And if you're a single mom, you're going to make about 40% less. So this just might be the reason there are so many women and children in poverty. And why there are only about 15 women, give or take, in the Fortune 500 for the last decade. The, I have lots to tell you about this. Got to keep moving fast paced here. I co-wrote this with Christian Ralph. Think about it, the Motherhood Manifesto. It's a systems problem. And we co-founded Moms Rising. I believe it's the part of the next wave of the women's movement. We're collaborating with over 100 policy partners to turn up the heat on back burner issues that are part of the system that's not working for us. We're promoting family economic security, working to end maternal profiling, which is a bias against mothers and hiring wages and advancement. And we have over a million members. That's another group. You ought to join it. We are mothers and people that love them. And I'm convinced, yeah, exactly. We like our mothers. <laughs> but oh, back one, please. See, I knew it would do. OK, the future we all want. You know, we're still not there. I've been living in this political world for over a decade now. And I'm a mediator by training. And I know that we can do so much better solving our problems when we work collaboratively. Yet finding the dynamics to do that, it isn't happening. And in fact, my top issue is climate change. And back in 2005, I was able to sit down with leadership of the Christian Coalition and talk about climate and have a good discussion. And in fact, Michelle Combs, Combs the top communications person at the Christian Coalition, took Al Gore's first climate training. Yeah, we could have that. We could not have that conversation today. And so, what I've been wanting to do for years, I finally did in 2010. Conversations for the grassroots between left and right. We need to start having real relationships across unusual lines. You know, we've become too tribal. We've separated ourselves. So. We made something that's very simple. I'm an organizer. We try to keep it really simple so people can do it themselves. Two friends, progressive and conservative, each invite two friends to have a structured conversation about a given issue that's open source. Anyone can use it for whatever issue they want. And it's mostly, that first conversation is mostly about listening. And I can't wait to learn more about what the second, third, and fourth conversations are. It's really exciting. The pilot project's key findings, I'm starting with the challenges, because you guys are teachers. You know that's where you start. OK, we live in increasingly self-segregated communities. So too many people I know will say, well, you know, I don't have progressive friends to talk to, or I don't have conservative friends to talk to. So you probably have a friend that has a conservative friend or a friend that has a progressive friend. Think the Kevin Bacon theory. We fi we're figuring things out there, and it does work. And I'm doing this. I have a conservative partner. That's my partner in living room conversations. Most people have deep anxiety about speaking to people with different views. That really is the case these days. And we were unable. The first conversation was about 
energy slash climate, we couldn't create a fact sheet that would be good for those conversations. We really need to just talk about energy to start with. And uh, because climate has become a partisan term. So the successes, every conversation was success, success. participants found common ground on cons conservation, energy, conserving energy, creating greater energy independence. Really, there's a lot of common ground to be found in almost every conversation. People felt they were heard and learned something about others. Now, I'm just taking, that's the pilot project. I got a lot of wonderful quotes. This is one quote from this year, New Hampshire Lessons has been doing conversations about people in government. And um, I just thought this quote expresses what I'm hoping these conversations do so well. The conversation captures what I find to be missing from modern media and modern political narratives. A sense that what we share as Americans is far deeper and more important than what divides us. A sense that, what we still, that we still have a chance to reach across partisan divides to identify both the core of our disagreements and the kernel of realistic compromises. I mean, yeah, I, it just, I mean, this makes me happy doing this. It's just a beautiful thing. So just so you know, the ground rules, common sense, be curious and open to learning. And as teachers, I knew you'd like that one, so I got a picture that's cute. Show respect and suspend judgment. No more pictures because we don't have time. Look for common ground. Be authentic and welcome it from others. Be purposeful and to the point. Own and guide the conversation. That's it. It's simple. And the question is, could this spark a civility revolution? Would that not be a wonderful thing? So. We have conversations that are already in the mix on energy, money and politics, immigration, nutrition and health, the role of local government. And I ask you, what's the conversations you should be having about education? I have brought with me these sheets right here. So anyone that wants to have a conversation, this is open source. We want people to try things out. You feed back into us what you learn. It's wonderful, believe me, and then you can tell me how to do it better. That's the objective. And at the heart of this, and I really had to use this statement, particularly with scientists, research shows many of our assumptions about how to reach people different from us are flat out wrong. We can't count on facts to change people's minds. Emotions and values trump facts almost every time. And when I say that, I, you know, just think about it. We are all trusting certain people in our lives, and then we don't hear the other. Once you have a relationship, you hear people in a very different way. Or to take it in a tribal level, if I convince someone about climate and they go to their tribe and they talk about that, they're going to be shunned. And in evolutionary terms, they die. So <laughs> you really have to pay attention to creating these relationships as a starting point. Why now? Citizens are sick of the status quo. We need collaborative solutions. Living room conversations are simple so that organizations and individuals can use the process. And we need to empower citizens to lead and tap the wisdom of crowds. Consider Wikipedia, YouTube. This is open source. If we can really open this up to what we learn from people, it will be amazing. And so what have I learned about movement building? Fill vacuums of leadership tap into cultural and media hotspots, persistence. You know, Move On's been around for 14 years now, and it's being there and persisting and knowing your goals and going for it. And then there are Goldilocks moments every so often. I think this next year can be a Goldilocks moment with the help of friends. So listen and serve. Strong vision, big ears, trust the citizens. And then we have change. Magnificent, amazing change where we're working together to find good solutions and we live happily ever after. <laughs> 36 seconds to go. I did it. <laughs> Thank you.